Today, SRAM has launched its fourth tier wireless group set. Named SRAM Apex Axis, it follows in the footsteps of three well-established electronic product lines from the American brand. Since SRAM has been so active in the wireless group set space for some time now, the Apex Axis group set is the recipient of plenty of trickle-down tech. So what is this new group set and what can we expect from it? For starters, it's not just one group set that has been launched, but instead an entire range of components that sit underneath the Apex name. There will be both electronic and mechanical parts available, but we'll start with the former. What we have is a 1x12 speed electronic group set with hydraulic disc brakes. The shape of the hoods imitate those of the rival and force group sets. Likewise, the placement of the shifting buttons is also exactly the same. The batteries used to power the system are the same as SRAM's other setups, that being a removable rechargeable battery on the derailleur and the shifters are powered using coin cell CR2032 batteries. On the flip side, a mechanical version of the group set is also being made. And the only real difference here is that the electronic gubbins have been removed, everything else is basically the same. One touch that I do quite like is the wide range of cassettes that can be used with Apex. Thanks to the two different derailleurs that have been made available, you can run a cassette all the way up to a 52 tooth in size. Now, that's not to say that many will, but you could if you really wanted to. So who is Apex Axis really for, since this certainly isn't an out and out road bike group set? Well, gravel riders mainly, and those who want a one by electronic drive train, but at an even more affordable price point. It's almost a given that bike brands will be snapping this group set up to deck out their gravel offerings. Any brand that chooses to spec the Apex Axis on its bikes will be able to create a build which delivers electronic shifting on a gravel bike for less money than ever before. Now, this release has certainly left Shimano on the back foot, as currently it doesn't have anything in its range which rivals this latest release from SRAM. However, Shimano have never been one to be dictated to by the Americans, so I'm sure in time we will see that little DI2 logo make its way down the GRX line of components in the same way it has for 105 DI2. Just a couple of weeks ago at Unbound Gravel, Ben Delaney spotted what could be a 12-speed mechanical GRX group set with what looks to be a 1042 tooth cassette. So there is some big change on the gravel scene right now. The electronic features don't just stop at the shifting, no. SRAM has created a single-sided power meter upgrade kit. So you can swap out the left-hand crank arm for one which has a spindle-mounted power meter, which neatly sits inside the frame. It must be said, the new components have taken a big step forwards in their appearance. It looks far more attractive than its predecessor. Personally, I think the chainset and the shifters have taken the biggest step forwards and now mean that at a first glance, you wouldn't instantly know you're looking at a fourth tier offering. Currently, Apex Axis kind of sits alone in the market with no real competitors. SRAM is the only brand to have brought out electronic shifting this far down in its range, and especially for a one by group set. Once again, SRAM is ahead of the curve and has come out with something which I believe will be incredibly popular. Prices for a 1x Apex Axis Explore group set come in at $1,195, £1,262 or €1,411, while a mechanical 1x Explore group set will come in at $987, £1,060 or €1,176. And the price of the power meter upgrade kit is $220 or £205 or €230. Euros. When we look at the weights of the group sets, the Apex Explore Axis drivetrain weighs in at 2,890 grams, with the Mechanical Explore drivetrain coming in at a claimed 2,872 grams. Only an 18 gram difference. There are flat bar and eagle versions of Apex too, each with their own pricing and weights, but I believe both the Explore versions of the group set will be the most popular. 
As a bonus piece of news, just yesterday, Zwift launched its next piece of hardware, named Zwift Play. What it's essentially created is a handlebar mountable controller. Now, the unit comes in two pieces, with each part mounting underneath your shifters. You get buttons to be able to control everything in the game, from giving ride-ons, changing worlds, and using power-ups. You now no longer need to reach over to your laptop or your phone to interact with the game. Instead, you just have to use your thumbs. The other cool feature is that there are two paddles on the front of the units, which allow you to brake when you push them both in, or you can steer when you pull either one to the outside. Both parts are USB rechargeable and can be charged in tandem with the Y-shaped USB-C cable. You can even have them plugged in and charging while you use them. We're also told that extensive testing has been done to ensure that they are sweatproof. In principle, I'm a big fan of what this new tech would do to the experience of riding indoors. I feel like it would be less faffy and you can focus more on just doing what you actually want to do. I also believe that this is the best implementation of indoor steering yet. Now, at launch, pricing will be £99, dollars or euros, with the price going up to £149, dollars or euros after the initial launch phase. Let me know down below, what do you think of the new SRAM Apex Axis components and of the new hardware from Zwift? If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I will see you again very soon.